we have no indication that this incident was a result of a deliberate attack uh, on NATO territory. And we have no uh, uh, indications that Russia is uh, uh, planning uh, offensive military actions against uh, uh, NATO allies. Um, so uh, I think this demonstrates the dangers uh, connected to the ongoing war in Ukraine, but it hasn't changed our fundamental assessment of uh, the threat against uh, NATO allies. That is NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg speaking just minutes ago about a deadly missile strike in Poland yesterday. That blast that killed two people in a town about 15 miles from the Ukrainian border is believed now to have been accidentally carried out by Ukraine's own air defense system. Joining us now, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, Ian Brzezinski. He's the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Europe and NATO Policy, former CIA officer Mark Polymeropoulos. He's an NBC News security and intelligence analyst and Poland's former foreign minister and minister of defense, Radek Sikorski. He's a member of the European Parliament and chair of a delegation from the parliament that meets regularly with its counterparts in the House of Representatives. Gentlemen, good morning uh, to you all. Mr. Foreign Minister, let me begin with you. Uh, we heard from President Duda just moments ago saying he believes this now is an unfortunate accident and not an intentional attack. Does that line up with what you're hearing? We grieve for our patriot, uh, compatriots, but of course are relieved that this doesn't appear to be a deliberate uh, act. Uh, but let's remember the real stories, which is the Ru that the Russians have carried out a massive uh, bombardment of Ukrainian cities in order to freeze uh, and deprive of electricity the state of Ukraine. And that's actually state terrorism and a war crime. Um, you know, we have received collateral damage. Uh, but the fault for this lies with the aggressor, which is the Russian Federation. Um, Ian uh, Brzezinski, uh, uh, former Russian ambassador Michael McFaul, uh, saying this morning that his colleagues in Kyiv described Putin's barrage of missile attacks today as the largest ever against civilians since Putin launched his invasion. I wish this massive terrorist attack would get more attention in the Western press. Of course, we will see if, in fact, that is confirmed, but Putin has stepped up, obviously, his attacks, his missile attacks on civilians in Ukraine. Um, the, Ambassador McFaul is suggesting that the Biden administration has done a very good job up to now, but that the United States and its NATO allies need to step up support uh, of Ukraine uh, so the momentum can continue. What say you about that? Morning, Joe. Morning, morning Mika. Uh, Mike McFall is absolutely right. I mean, look, this attack yesterday underscores the indiscriminate brutality of the Russian invasion, but also the kind of the uncontrollable, unpredictable nature of war. And so, therefore, we have to address this directly. You know, this tragedy yesterday, the death of two innocent uh, Polish farmers, was a direct consequence, as Foreign Minister Sikorsky said, of Russia's massive barrage against Ukrainian infrastructure, against Ukraine's civilian population yesterday. It was a barrage, by the way, that was Putin's response to President Zelensky's rollout of a peace process to bring this war to an end. So we do have a requirement to respond to this, 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 this incident, this, this crisis, this tragedy, with a real demonstra demonstrable demonstration of resolve. And it's got to be tangible. At a minimum, there should be a real escalation of economic sanctions against Russia. We need to increase the flow and the quality of weapons to Ukraine, including air and missile defense systems. And I think at this point in the war, now that it has expanded beyond Ukraine's borders, there needs to be serious consideration by the West to deploy in western Ukraine air and missile defenses manned by a coalition of the willing, if not NATO. This would help enhance the security of the Ukrainian population. It would also help mitigate the risks posed by this conflict to Poland's neighbors, Poland, I'm excuse me, to Ukraine's neighbors, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania. And this would in no way be threatening to Russian forces, because these are defensive systems that could be deployed in the uncontested areas of Ukraine. But it would enhance the security of the region, and it would demonstrate to the Russians that we are serious about our commitment to help Ukraine defend itself. 
Mark Polymeropoulos, uh, President Zelensky yesterday got out in front of this too far uh, and said, you know, this is a Russian attack on, on Poland. This is a strike against NATO. NATO must respond. It looks like now it was, in fact, accidental from Ukraine's own defense forces. Richard Haas, Admiral Stavridis here earlier saying it never really made sense that that would be a Russian attack if they were going to attack NATO. Why would they do it, first of all, and why would they do it in that way? But to the larger point, the reason those air defense missiles exist in the western part of Ukraine is because Russia is attacking targets that deep in the country, civilian targets, infrastructure. So what do you learn, what do you glean from what we saw in the last 24 hours? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, you know, a tip of the tip of the hat to my old colleagues in the intelligence community, because, you know, you know, only several hours ago, this was seen as a pretty much a crisis situation. You know, was this a deliberate Russian attack? And, and very patiently and very soberly, the intelligence community, you know, discerned from things such as signals intelligence, you know, perhaps communications intercepts from Russian commanders, uh, uh, you know, telemetry data, you know, the point of origin of where the attack came from and ultimately comes down to what seems to be the conclusion that that this was a, in an errant uh, Ukrainian uh, air defense system. And so, you know, in terms of, of managing escalation, I think that was that was very good. That's exactly what the intelligence community is designed to do. Also, you know, don't forget that only several days ago, CIA director Bill Burns was meeting with his Russian counterpart, uh, uh, SVR chairman Narishkin in Turkey. So the lines of communication, the, the channels are open. But I think what Ian said is exactly right. You know, at, at the end of the day, this happened because of a, a massive barrage of, of cruise missiles that are, you know, killing innocent Ukrainians that are hitting infrastructure targets. So I think really, you know, the, what, I, what I hope the, the meetings today in, uh, uh, amongst NATO members are, are going to address is what more can we do? Let's go back to the, the notion of attack of missiles. These are long range missiles that could hit targets inside Russia. Um, these are the point of origin of, of these missile strikes. You can argue that that is defensive in nature. So I hope that's the, 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 the way we're gonna go in, you know, in the next 24 to 48 hours. Well, Mr. Foreign Minister, let me ask you, um, from, from the Poles' point of view, the Poles, of course, have been extraordinary allies through this entire process. They've been extraordinary allies to the Ukrainians, allowing uh, so many refugees into their country. I know you all have uh, personally yourself. I am curious, uh, answer that question uh, that right now is being asked. What more needs to be done by the West? What more needs to be done by the United States, needs to be no done by NATO, not only to help the Ukrainians, but also to protect our Polish brothers and sisters? Well, the Ukrainian state has to be kept afloat. It needs macroeconomic assistance. Clearly, Ukraine needs uh, capable Western anti-aircraft and anti-missile systems. Poland has supplied some anti-aircraft missiles, some uh, howitzers. Um, but also, for the sake of Ukraine, we need to protect that logistical hub in Poland around the city of Rzeszów. Um, it, it, there are a couple of Patriot batteries there, but it's clearly not enough. The Russians regularly miss their targets. And if that Western aid is to continue to flow through Poland to Ukraine, that hub needs to be protected more vi uh, vigorously. What, what